Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about some rather unknown redstone mechanics, and these are p ticks and c ticks I have a simple problem. At one point you want to activate both rows of pistons, those that are connected via redstone dust and those that are connected via repeaters. This can be done simply by powering the redstone dust. But what if at one point you only want to power those that are connected by repeaters or only those that are connected by redstone dust? Well, for those that are connected by redstone dust, we can use c ticks, and for those that are connected via repeaters, we can use p ticks. This begs the question, what are p ticks and what are c ticks? I will begin with the latter, c ticks, otherwise known as consumer ticks. Consumer ticks will only interact with pistons, lamps, trapdoors as well as fence gates and doors, TNT, droppers, dispensers, bells, rails, hoppers, and note blocks. However, they are not able to interact with repeaters, comparators, observers, and redstone torches, which fall under the category of producers, but more on that later. Why do c ticks only interact with these blocks, with consumers? Well, the real question here is why are these blocks consumers? And there is actually a very simple answer to that. Consumers are basically redstone components, or blocks, which will take an input and do an action, not giving a redstone output. Pistons will push blocks, redstone lamps will activate, trap doors as well as doors and fence gates will toggle state, TNT will blow up, droppers will drop items, dispensers will dispense items, bells, they'll be annoying, activator rails as well as powered rails and normal rails can also change state, hoppers will lock, and note blocks will make noise. That is why these blocks fall under the category of a consumer and is why they are activated by c ticks. And now on to p ticks, otherwise known as producer ticks. They can only interact with producers and will not interact with consumers. Just how consumers have a reason for falling into that category, so do producers. Anyways, producers basically take an input and give a direct redstone output. That is how we categorize these as producers. Repeaters will take a direct redstone input and give a delayed output which can differ in pulse length from its input. Comparators, they're a bit complicated, worthy of their own video. Observers will detect block updates and give a one redstone tick output. And redstone torches, they will invert the signal with a redstone tick of delay. Here I have a very basic setup with a C tick generator and a P tick generator connected up to this redstone line, which connects to a bunch of redstone components. When we activate the C tick generator, it's going to send a C tick through the redstone line, and it will activate the hopper, the redstone lamp, and the sticky piston. These are consumers. When I activate the P tick generator, it is going to activate the redstone repeater, comparator, observer, and redstone torch. It will not interact with the hopper, the redstone lamp, or the sticky piston. When I activate the c tick generator, you can see that only the consumers activate, which are the redstone lamp, the hopper, and the sticky piston. We've already established that. When I activate the producer tick generator, or the p tick generator, only the producers will activate. And it actually creates this very weird effect where what you see doesn't really add up with what you'd expect. You see the redstone line visibly update but we don't get the sticky piston extending. It is something quite weird, actually. Weirdness aside, I'm going to start giving some actual useful examples, which you might even use yourself. So right here, this is actually my favorite example of P-Ticks in action. We can activate this redstone torch, which is on the side of this piston, so do soft inversion without actually activating this piston, and we don't need an immovable block on top of it. As you can see, the redstone torch on the side of this piston gets deactivated temporarily even though the piston never extends. The only other way in which we can have this redstone torch deactivate is if we activate the redstone line, but if for some reason you can't have this piston extend, then it would be impossible unless you would have an immovable block. But thanks to PTIX, we can actually do it. Another useful thing that you can do with PTIX is actually run a redstone signal over T and T. It is something quite fun to mess around with. If we activate the PTIC generator, you can see how the redstone signal goes over the TNT and then feeds into this repeater, which powers that piston. And for those of you wondering, yes, TNT explodes is turned on in this world. Very similar to the PTIC, we can actually activate this piston without interacting with this redstone torch with a C tick. So as you can see, it activates the piston without ever interacting with this redstone torch. Something quite useful indeed. 
Another useful example, and it is actually the one that I use the most right after the soft inversion tricks, it is sending a redstone signal through a redstone line without actually updating any observers. So as you can see, because we're using CTIX, it will only activate the piston and it will not activate the observers. This can be quite useful in compacting builds. So there you go, some useful examples of what you can do with PTIX and CTIX. There are obviously many, many more things that you can do with them, but I will leave those up to you guys to discover. Anyways, that is it for today's video, but before I end, I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone from the Redstoners Pub who has helped me check all the information and make sure it is correct. But anyways, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye!